Welcome to the Jesus Calling Podcast. Today's guests give us insight into a way of living that God implores each of us to pursue, being anxious for nothing. Our guest is pastor and author Max Licato. Max has written two books on this topic, one for adults called Anxious for Nothing and another one for children called I'm Not a Scaredy Cat. Max tells us about why it was important to him to write on the topic of anxiety, which afflicts so many of us in a tense world. Now, here's Max. Writing about the topic of anxiety is a pretty easy call for somebody who's involved in church work. All of my books come out of sermons. And uh, as, as you talk to people this day and age, you realize it's a very, very anxious culture in which we live. And statistics have borne this out. The uh, discovery that the United States is now considered uh, the land of uh, stress and strife more than stars and stripes is no surprise. Uh, it's just an anxious time in which we live. And you sense that, I think, in, in, in talking with church members, even in my, the span of my ministry, it seems like especially young people are more anxious today than they were. So it, it's, it's just a topic. It's just where people are. And so that's, that's what prompted me to delve in. I differentiate between fear and anxiety. Fear is, is the emotion you feel when you see a rattlesnake on the side of the trail. Uh, anxiety is the if emotion that says, I'll never go on another trail for fear of a rattlesnake. Uh, fear is a, is a God-given, appropriate response to danger. Anxiety is the assumption that danger lurks around every corner. Uh, and so I, I think fear has an important place in our world. It, it keeps us safe. Anxiety, especially the perpetual sense of anxiety, can be uh, crippling and it, it can paralyze us. And that's why it must be dealt with. One psychologist says that, uh, Philip Zimbardo says that the average uh, high school student today feels the same amount of fear as a psychiatric patient of the 1950s. And, and so there, there is a level of anxiety. And, and we touched on uh, the reason for that. One reason is we are in a fast changing society. The, the world is changing. We move fast, whereas uh, our grandparents and great grandparents uh, moved at one pace. We move at a pace they can only imagine. You know, a century and a half ago, you could only go as far as your horse could take you or your camel could take you. Now you can go travel as far as you want into the night. It, it, it's just an amazing pace in which we live. So we try to cram more and more into it. I think that uh, Paul's solution for anxiety is the same, even though the manifestations of anxiety are different. You know, you could make a case and say, well, Paul was writing in prison. He had a level of anxiety that, that uh, none of us will ever have to face. Yet at the same time, the Apostle Paul wasn't barra barraged by news feeds and, and didn't live in a generation that saw more transition and change in it in 30 years than in the last 300 combined. And so both situations are different. Uh, the two situations are different, but his solution of trusting the sovereignty of God, taking your concerns to God to prayer, managing your thoughts. All of these are uh, transcultural and they are practical in whatever situation a person might find themselves. Max looks at anxiousness as a problem that we can be prone to at any age. He talks about the special challenges for young people and addresses this in his new book for kids called, I'm Not a Scaredy Cat. Every technology comes with its blessings and its burdens. The burdens is it creates this pace, this sense of got to do more, got to go faster, got to get more accomplished. Uh, and I think that's especially impacted our, our young people. Now, how do you deal with it? It's the same way that the Apostle Paul had to deal with it. What did he do? Well, he celebrated the sovereignty of the Lord. He went quickly to the Lord with his concerns and fears. He focused on, more, on gratitude, what he had more than what he didn't have. And he was careful to pick what he pondered. He managed what he thought about. So some of these principles, though written in a culture entirely different than ours, are amazingly appropriate and practical today. Writing the story was a lot of fun. And the way we, we approached it was we envisioned the, this cat who really is a scaredy cat, even though he says he's not one. Uh, and he's scared, he's frightened of the, of the most innocent things. The, even the sprinkles on a donut he's afraid of. But how does he deal with his fears? He deals with his fear by saying a, a prayer. And that's what we're hoping to help children, to help them learn to deal with their fears early on 
uh, not by pretending that they're not afraid, or that they're not a scaredy cat, but by taking those fears to God in prayer. Max goes on to talk about the scripture that his new book, Anxious for Nothing, is based upon, which specifically addresses how we can conquer anxiety. He breaks it down into four simple principles that we can all apply to our lives daily when facing anxious moments. The book is built around the Philippians 4 passage on anxiety. And that passage has four big ideas for dealing with anxiety. First, rejoice in the Lord always. So I call that celebrate. Celebrate God. Celebrate God's goodness. Celebrate His sovereignty. Celebrate. Make a big deal out of God. And then the apostle says, uh, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Let your requests be made known to God with thanksgiving. So the second thing we do is we ask God for help. We ask God for help. The second that, that anxiety enters your heart is the second that you give it to God. You don't tolerate it or indulge it for a minute. And then you leave it with God. You leave it with Him. You don't for a second think that uh, you, He's calling on you to fix it. You resign as ruler of the universe and you let Him take over. I think that is part of what Paul, what Paul meant when he said, with thanksgiving. Uh, leave all, you, you let your requests be made known to God with thanksgiving. So you're grateful. You say, thank you, Lord. I'm giving this to you. And you turn your mind away from what the anxiety is and you turn your mind onto the things that you have because anxiety and gratitude never share the same heart. One has to leave. So if you want anxiety to leave, you get gracious, you get gratitude in your heart. And then lastly, you meditate on good things. Paul gives us a long list of things to meditate on. And none of those are negative things. All of them are positive, good, encouraging things. And so you pick what you ponder, you think about what you think about, you practice thought management. Max's writings around anxiety give practical steps on how to approach a world that can often provoke fear and stress. He also talks about our need to engage with God in a deeper way and discusses how Jesus' calling can help people better understand a loving Father who wishes to shelter them from harm. I came uh, to understand the power of the Jesus Calling book uh, through some friends. Actually, a good friend of mine who owns a, a bookstore and kind of discovered the book before everybody else did. And his wife called his attention to it. And uh, before it was really a big seller, she urged him to place it front and center in the bookstore. And he was amazed at the stories he began to hear. He's the one who called my attention to it. And, uh, and I found that its unique ability to speak to hearts from the perspective of Christ is so deeply needed today because I think our culture is in need of a paternal understanding of, of God. In many ways, even those of us who have had good fathers, who have good fathers, still have a longing for a fatherly presence. And so when I pick up Jesus calling, I feel like a father is talking to my heart. For me, if I focus on what I have rather than what I don't, if I attempt to cultivate a spirit of uh, gratitude, then I think my heart is more open to being reminded that God is near. My challenge is I can get on a spiral of assuming something bad is going to happen quicker than quicksand. I just think it's the devil. I think I'll be in a meeting or I'll be in a conversation or I'll just be in a thought process and I'll begin imagining all the bad things that are about to happen. This is gonna happen, then that's gonna happen, then that's gonna happen. And I'm terrible about envisioning conversations, awkward conversations. And I'll just go into this terribly awkward, painful, confrontive conversation that I know I'm eventually gonna have with that person if I'm ever gonna get this sorted out. I can't tell you how many times I've looked back and I thought, I spent 10 minutes imagining that conversation. It never even, it never appeared on the radar screen. But I just think that's the devil. He likes to stir up fear and stir up this anxiety. And so uh, I counter that uh, by practicing what I wrote about, and that's celebrating God's sovereignty, ask the Lord for help, leave the problem with Him, and change my mindset, meditate on something good. To find out more about Max's new books, Anxious for Nothing and I'm Not a Scaredy Cat, please visit maxlocato.com. What is shaking in your world? Possibly your future, your faith, your family, your finances. It's a shaky world out there. Could you use some unshakable hope? If so, you're not alone. 
Anxiety fills our todays and uncertainty prowls our future. People are dying for a lack of hope. You know, after 40 years of ministry, I've discovered that nothing lifts the weary soul like the promises of God. This book, Unshakable Hope, contains some of my favorites. His promises will never be broken. They offer a hope that is an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. We are building our lives on the promises of God. Because His Word is unbreakable, our hope is unshakable. I'm Max Locato.